it's a woman. In 1965, Monty Hellman directed two films, back-to-back, in the same location. Utah Desert that provided the backdrop to these two westerns wasn't the only commonality. A great deal of the cast and crew were also recycled, and many of those individual contributions I could analyze and discuss at length. But when I watched these films again and again, there was only one star in my orbit. It isn't the great Jack Nicholson, who produced and appears in both films, and wrote one of them. It isn't the nearly mythical Warren Oates, whose films I seek out like hidden items on a scavenger hunt. It isn't even Monty Hellman himself, who directed some of the other films in my all-time favorites list. So many great contributions, but they all fade quickly into the shadows of my one-track mind. Millie Perkins only had four films on her resume before she was pegged to play roles in each film. The characters could not be more different. While a strong case could be made that she is the star of the shooting... Her less upfront role in Ride in the Whirlwind is equally as important given the limited cast, and she always catches my eye when she is in the camera's view. Today, we take a closer look at the performances of Millie Perkins in Monty Hellman's two 1965 films, The Shooting and Ride in the Whirlwind. This is Scratch the Surface. <laughs> Every minute that the shooting progresses, you begin to feel like you're getting closer to an understanding. Then a few moments later, you realize it was all for naught. Millie Perkins' unnamed character arrives unannounced well. asking for help. She's willing to pay for it, but offers no backstory, just money. Look at me, Mr. Gashade. Without perishing from the tricks of my own mind, how could I possibly get to Kingsley on my own? Well, I ain't the only one who knows the way, ma'am. But it's you I'm asking. Please think about it. That's just what I'm doing. In this scene, the woman shows a fleeting instant of femininity and something else that can only be compared to a bratty, spoiled child. Ma'am, I got a... water is not clean. In fact, it's stagnant. Oh! Please. Oh, hold on. Here. Oh. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa, well, Pew, what is that? Well, it's all I could find. Offering someone too. money unsolicited is always Two insulting, but literally throwing money around is a special form of degradation reserved for a special type of scum, no. or maybe just a humiliating token delivered by a special type of wretch with an unnamed bone to pick. All right. Not fine, but all right. Let's get started. Take it, Charlie. No, you take it, Mr. Gashay. I'm ready to go. We'll go tomorrow. Now. Morning always makes a good start. Would you like to go with me now? Me? Well, sure. Coley? Take up the bunny, then. Coley? Go on! Coley? What, Will? Back the mule. Besides the viewer, Will Hutchins' character Coley is the only one who is dying to know more about the mysterious woman. His puppy love based probing for information is so innocent, the woman's sudden warmth reminds me of a cobra about to strike its prey. Do you think that maybe I can call you by your name or something? I mean, of course, uh, miss this or that. All right. You just tell me what is your most favorite name. Well, uh, there's my mama's name. You know that one. That's all right, Coley. You just tell me what was it. Let's see, uh, my daddy called her by, uh, Hortensia. Well, don't ever call me that. Any desert truck can bring you know, tempers to flare. Well, in this explosive moment of vulnerability, you know the woman seems to be after. nearing her wit's end, then suddenly pulls it together in a way that speaks of her commitment to the perplexing journey. Hold your horse. What's this shooting all the time? You're trying to tell someone where we're at, ain't that so? You're so stupid. You're going to tell me what this is all about. 
I hate you. Why, she is practicing, Will. What's the matter with you, miss? You got something wrong? Well, she looked like sick, Will. Who got me? Oh, now what could you done, miss? She's waltzing. Let me help you down off. Say, stop groping at me. Were well, you slipping? I'm not. It's just an excuse to touch me. Will you stop staring at me? Get back up on your horse. Mr. Gachet. If you're feeling that bad, miss, maybe you ought to light down. How much sun's left? An hour, maybe. The role of Abigail in Ride in the Whirlwind might seem innocuous at first, but as the member of a very small family and a vast piece of God's country, no constituent can be considered as such, and each has their own capacity to fill. There are chores to be done and a story to be told. Even under the duress of a home invasion, Abigail is perhaps so emotionally barren from too much time alone that she shows more fear or even irritation with her father than the criminals holding her captive. You're fine. I forgot to wash up. He always washes up. Abby? Answer. Yes, Pa? Where's my wash up? Tell him you get it. I'm sorry, Pa. I, I'll get it. What's going on inside there with you women? What's the matter with you? I'm sorry, Pa. I forgot. It's hard to say if she has trust for Wes or how much. Perhaps Abigail is eager for any kind of attention, even a stranger or a criminal. The discussion in the stables shows her open up from a total refusal to speak, to parroting her pa's sentiments, to an eagerness to get away. Sometimes even what we long for most is too much to handle. You don't say much. You like it here? Can we go in? My father don't like it if I talk to strangers. He don't mean nothing to me. They're gonna hang us. You think that's right? I don't know. It ain't up to me. You just do what? What's right with your paws all you care about? I can't say. You oughtn't to steal our stock. That ain't my problem. Tell them vigilantes they're the ones. It's the wrong thing to do. What's right? Hang? Well, we ought to go in. When I say it, I know we'll go in. Allowing the use of your bed is a very personal act. There is something about the swift moment where they make eye contact, and Abigail says, go ahead, to her stern about face that acknowledges their cursory bond, then demonstrates its limit. You mind I get some sleep, Vern? Warm. This is my bed. No, it's all right. No, no go on. Obliged.
Perhaps deadened by her family's isolation, Abigail's flat affect persists even after witnessing the death of her father. Something about that sideways glance wonders if she can go along and shows no concern for the dubious future left to her and her mother without the family patriarch. These two films have been analyzed at length as long as they've been around by both qualified film scholars and simple film geeks. I won't regurgitate some synopsis or review that you can pick up somewhere else by someone far more qualified than myself. I don't know how many have sung praises for Ms. Perkins' performances in these two films, and I don't care. Even if I'm 100th in line, I fully intend to deliver kudos to where they are rightfully deserved. It is for her performances, amongst others, that I treasure these films. Let's close things out with a few words from Miss Perkins herself. This is Scratch the Surface. Thanks for watching. It was great. I mean, the thing is, the first thing I remember is Jack calling me up before we went up and said, come over to Western Costume, we gotta pick out our costumes. Right. And I picked out a hat, and Jack said, no, I want that hat. And he took the hat, really? so I got the black hat. <laughs> it's okay, but you know, that was Jack, right? The black Jack, hat right? was good. The, <laughs> <laughs> the ride in the whirlwind character, and I said this to a friend recently because she said, oh, I saw that, and you were such a nice little character there. You know, I'm living on the, on the middle of the, nowhere in the West with my father and my mother and every day I fed the chickens and, and brought him water and we lived there and I never saw a human being hardly ever. The only thing I ever saw every single day was my mother, my father and the chickens. And I, I made my character, I said her best friends were the chickens. And, she, and if you notice in the show, I do a lot of this, you know? And I, and I copied her character and I said, was well, she identified with the chickens because that's all she knew because I loved doing this when someone, when Jack I was, and I were in the barn together, uh -huh. and he's talking to me, and I'm going, it was, it was <laughs> a chicken girl. I was. hoped, and my friend understood it when I told her. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? I could have left any time. I'm talking about now. I got my reasons for staying. Reasons? There ain't gonna be no kill. The reason Mr. Gachet for a hunt is the kill.